I had signed on as an ordinary seaman on the falls of Ettrick, merchant ship bound for England. The first time I saw that ship, I knew her right away. She was the old Gertrude Spurshoe. I had sailed on her years before when she was painted brown and gold. Now she was painted black and had a new name, but it was the same ship for sure. We had a pretty good crew for that voyage except one hard-looking ticket named McLaren. He was a pretty good seaman, and, but there was something about him that I, I didn't trust. He was kind of secretive, kept mostly to himself. One day somebody told me that I had worked, somebody told him that I had worked on the old kerchief. For some reason he got all a tremble over that. Then I catched him giving me all these ugly black books as if he was itching to knife me in the back. I guess it had something to do with the Gertrude, but I didn't know what. Well, this one day we was trying our, to work our way through a dripping black frog. He scarcely knew we had all the lights on. And it was dead calm. There wasn't a breath of fresh air. The ship just lay wallowing in a trough. Rolling and rolling, going nowhere. I was standing my watch around midships and McLaren was doing his trick at the wheel. The rest of the crew was scattered around one place or another. It was as quiet as could be. Then all at once, wacko! This thing hits the deck right in front of McLaurin. He lets go a screech that turns my blood cold and he falls down in a faint. The second mate starts yelling that somebody's fallen from aloft. Laying out there just forward of the weevil was someone or something. Dressed in oil skins and blood oozing out from underneath. The captain ran and fetched a big light from his cabin so we could see who it was. They kind of straightened him out to get a good look at his face. He was a big, ugly-looking devil, but nobody knew who he was or what he was doing up there. At least nobody was saying. When McLaren came to came to from his fate, they tried to get something out of him. All he did was jabber away and keep those rolling those big, wild-looking eyes of his. Everybody was getting more and more excited. We all wanted to heave the body overboard and as quick as we could. There was something weird about it, as, as if it wasn't real. But the captain wasn't so sure about getting rid of it that way. Could it be a still what he asked? But the ship was so filled with lumber we were carrying, there was no space where a living thing could hide out for three weeks, or just how long we had been out. Even if it was a stowaway, what was it doing a lot on such a dirty day? There was no reason for anyone to be up there. There was nothing to see. Finally, the captain gave up and gave us, told us to heave him overboard, and nobody would touch him. The mate orders to pick him up, and nobody would make a move. Then he tried coaxing, but that didn't do any good. Suddenly, that gloomy McLaren starts yelling, I handled him once, and I can handle him again. He picks up the body and staggers over the railing. He's just about to throw it overboard when it wraps his two big long arms around him. And over they go together. Then on the way, one of them starts laughing. In a horrible way. The mates are yelling that he launch a boat, but nobody would get him in the boat. Not on a night like this. They threw a couple of life preservers after him, but everybody knew they wouldn't help. So that was that. Or was it? first chance I had to go home after that. I went right over to the old captain Spurshu, who was captain when the Gertrude was around. Well, he says, one ship, these two outlandish men shipped over the Gertrude. One was McLaren, the other was a really big fellow. The big one was always picking on McLaren and thumping him around. And McLaren was always talking about how he would get back at him. Well, this wet dirty night with two of them were up there, was up there alone. And the big one comes flying down, killing himself dead or in the harem. McLaren says the fellow they were using parted him. 
how he almost fell himself. But everybody who saw the rope knew that she didn't give away on her own. She had been cut through with a knife. After that, we went. whenever we went into port, McLaurin, we thought we, we was going to get the police after him and that he'd get pretty scared, but we couldn't prove anything. So we didn't try. In the end, I guess the big fella took care of things his own way. If he was a ghost that came back, that's what he was. If there be things like ghosts,